Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video we're continuing our Ansible journey and we're going to look at the use of secrets and variables. These are really important, secrets are going to keep things safe so people don't see them and environment variables are going to make sure that you can change multiple options, variables, on the fly and keep things up to date in a seamless manner without having to go through things like control F and replace and all those sorts of things. Let's jump straight into it. So in the previous video, I showed you how to spin up this Nginx container in Docker using Ansible. And we came up with this here where it said Jim's Garage and I had Jim's Garage in the tab at the top here. But in this video, we're gonna change that. I'm just gonna put in Bob's Garage and I'm also gonna put in a super secret password here. Now, these aren't exactly realistic examples of where you'd want to use this necessarily, but it is gonna show you how we can substitute values, variables, that you can specify yourself in a separate file. And it's also going to discuss the Ansible vault where we can store our secrets knowing that they're secure. That means we don't have to be putting them in plain text within commands or other playbooks, etc. And we can actually use the encryption built into the Ansible vault to keep everything nice and secure. So how do we get from this to this? Let's jump into VS Code. Let's find out. So the previous playbook looked like we had on screen. So I'm gonna replace that with the new playbook. Now the new playbook has a few tweaks, so let's go through it and have a look, make sure we understand what's going on here. So the first thing we need to do to get this working is to add the FQCN of the Ansible built-in include variables. And I've simply created a file called myvars.yaml. And if we have a look in my variables, I've just created the website name variable and I've called it Bob's. So we're gonna use that later. Obviously, with all of this stuff, and when we get onto more complex things like Docker and Kubernetes, we're going to be putting a whole host of variable names within files such as these, and then we can call them through the script. So, how do we call them? Well, back in the playbook, nothing else has really changed until we get a little bit further down. So, the bit I've changed here is I've created what's technically, you can specify a regex here as well, is I'm replacing the old name with the new name. So this requires Ansible greater than 2.4, which isn't an issue on the version we're using. And it simply looks for the regular expression of Jim's garage, and it's gonna replace it with what we just said on here. So Bob's. So instead of saying Jim's garage, it's just gonna say Bob instead. And to do that, we simply need to use the brackets here, and then that variable name. If you had multiple different variable names, you would specify them throughout this playbook. I'm keeping it really simple with just the one for now, but this process will be expandable. We just simply need to repeat this throughout other playbooks. The second bit I'm doing is then making use of variable names again, but instead this one is actually a secret. So it's probably time that we got onto secrets. Now, this will behave exactly the same as this one here, except this one is in plain text and this one is actually stored in the Ansible vault. So what we need to do first is to get something into the Ansible vault. So let's create a new file. I'm going to create new file and I'm going to call this one secrets underscore file dot enc. And when I hit return, it's going to create a new file. So in here, I'm just going to put in an API key and a super secret password, literally that. So imagine this is something like your Kubernetes API key, your secret token, Docker Swarm token, anything that you would want to keep secret. It could even be things for inside your network, such as tokens for Gotify, for example. Anyway, you would add in here as many secrets as you want and you can edit this later. So don't worry about encrypting it and then not having access to it. Do make sure you keep a note of the password though. We'll see that in a moment. So I'm gonna control S that and save it. Next, we now need to hop into the terminal to actually encrypt this file. Thankfully, it's dead straightforward and we just make use of the Ansible vault. So the command we need looks like this. Very simple, call Ansible vault. We want to encrypt and we want to encrypt the file we've just created, which is this one here. So I'm gonna keep that open in the background and look what happens when we complete this command. So when we hit return, it's gonna ask for a password. So I'm just putting in password, obviously put something secure. And when I confirm that, let's see what happens in the background. 
you'll see that that's now been encrypted with AES-256 and we can't read that value. The only way we're going to be able to read that value is if we have that password. So that's great. We now have a secret that's encrypted and we can reference. So when we call that API key variable, it's going to look in this file and it's going to find that and populate it in real time. We do need to change the existing deploy configuration, that Ansible Playbook command line interface command. We'll do that in a minute. There's one last thing we might want to do on top of that. At the moment, when we run this playbook, it's going to ask us now to put in the become password and it's going to ask us to open the vault password. You can actually store the vault password itself and reference that. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I create a new file, I'm just going to call it password. And I'm just going to put in here the value of password and save that. Now, obviously, you would want to set some permissions to access this file. So just for the user that Ansible is, i.e. the Ansible user on this machine, you wouldn't want other users to have access to it because they'd see your password. So do make sure you check the file folder and permissions for this file. But anyway, if you've done that, we can now go ahead and use this within our automation. And so now bringing it all together, we have this command here. So much like the last one, but with a few tweaks, we specify Ansible playbook. This is a playbook we want to run. We do the file copy playbook. That's the one we're on at the moment. We specify the inventory file. And then we've got a new one here, this dash E. And we want to reference the encoded secrets file. That's this one up here. We specify the key file, which is obviously our SSH key. We still want to ask it to become the password, so this is the root password for the user. We can also store that as well if we wanted to. And then we specify that the vault password file is stored in this password. So it's not going to ask us for it because it will be able to find it because we've referenced it within the command. So now let's go and hit return. The key thing we're expecting here is we don't want to be seeing Jim's garage. We don't want to see this here. And we also i am replacing this our features with the super secret and I'll show you that in this script. So over on the file copy playbook, you'll see that down here, I'm replacing the our features with the API key. So it should show us that API key value on the website. So now let's go and run this command and hopefully everything will deploy as expected. Asking me for the password. That's now going away and creating it. and everything looks to have finished. Let's go and have a look at the website. So now this is the old one. If I hit refresh, brilliant. We've now got Bob's Ansible demo and we've got the super secret password here, which was my API key. And it's also changed in the top left hand corner as well. So everything seems to have worked as expected. So let's now say that you want to add additional text to your secrets file. How can you do that? Well, pretty straightforward. Again, we call the Ansible vault, but this time we call the edit command. And the command that we need looks like this. Ansible vault, edit, and then our secrets file. So when we hit return on here, it's gonna ask us for a password. When I edit that, it's gonna open it up within the terminal itself. Now, this might not be the best user experience if you're wanting to add lots of complex variables. You might actually want to create a new secrets file and reference it and you could do it that way. Anyway, let's just edit this. So we can do an I. We could then add something else. So password. And then we could save this and it's already re-encoded. We don't need to do anything after this. Now it looks like this opens with VI, not nano that I'm used to. So I've hit escape and I think it's QW, no, WQ, there we go, write and quit. So now that's actually gone and edited the file and now we'd be able to call that variable as and when we required. And looking at the secrets file, you can see this has now got additional lines that relate to that additional data. So that's great.
So thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully now that adds a bit more security and a bit more convenience to your playbooks. Now you can keep your secrets safe and also be able to change things on the fly without having to draft whole new playbooks, find complex variables. You can simply now have a variables file and reference it, safe in the knowledge that everything's going to update when it refers to those variables. This is going to be instrumental in our more complex playbooks with Docker Swarm, Kubernetes and building out our lab. So it's a good thing to get used to. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed that. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Take care everybody.